Injecting tummy doll. Hi. That better not be my tomato. Check it out. Through the miracle of science, I modified this tomato to glow. <laughs> Ta-da! I don't get it. It works perfectly on paper. <sighs> Let me see that clipboard. You just inject it with glow stick goo, make it glow, and then make the big bucks. Listen, you can't just inject things with other things and expect anything to happen. Here. Let me show you. Huh? Huh? <laughs> ah! A little more warning next time. Ah! You done? No. So we can make plants and animals glow, but they don't glow because they've been injected with the contents of a glow stick. It's because they're transgenic. That means that DNA from another organism has been inserted into their genome. To make things glow in the dark, scientists use genes from the coral jellyfish, which is naturally bioluminescent. Hmm? Wait. You're putting jellyfish in tomatoes? I got stung by a jellyfish once! I almost died! Are you trying to kill me? No! If I wanted to kill you, you'd already be dead. Maybe we should start from the very beginning. Inside every cell, you and every other organism on this planet have DNA. The functional parts of DNA are called genes, and all genes are made up of the same four bases. There's no such thing as a fish gene or a human gene. A gene is a gene, no matter where it came from. It's how these four bases are ordered, and which genes are turned on that make genes function differently in different organisms. In fact, we humans share a lot of our genes with other organisms like mice, fruit flies, and even plants. So, me and Rachmaninoff here are much closer than I previously thought. Dude, don't talk to it. That's just embarrassing. Shh, don't listen to her. You ruin everything. Genes encode instructions to create proteins that have a variety of functions. Everything from forming muscle tissue to helping us fight infection or making jellyfish glow. So there's two ways of getting those genes in. The first way is through biolistic transfection using what's known as a gene gun. No. Oh. That's like exactly what I thought the gene gun would look like. With this method, really, really small particles of pure gold are coated with the short strands of DNA containing the gene of interest. A short burst of pressurized helium then blasts through a tube and the gold particles literally act as bullets, passing into the nucleus and depositing the DNA, which will integrate itself into the genome. The second method is a little more complicated. It involves using a special kind of bacteria known as agrobacterium, which has the ability to inject its DNA into plant cells using plasmids. In the lab, scientists are able to insert a gene into the plasmid. They then expose a plant leaf to the agrobacterium. The bacteria attaches itself to the plant cell wall and injects the DNA. The cells containing the new DNA can then be cultured and grown into new plants, where every cell now contains the new DNA. Yeah. Gotta get off that agrobacteria. No, no, no. There is no bacteria in or on these new plants. These harmless bacteria are killed and removed. Only the transgenic plant tissue is left, making it perfectly safe to eat. W did you just eat it? Somebody said safe to eat. We're also trying to use fish genes in fruit. The arctic flounder contains a gene that produces antifreeze proteins. These are simply proteins, not chemicals, that have the ability to bind to small ice crystals, preventing them from growing. So we've put that gene into berries, making them more resistant to freezing in cold weather. Ah, I'm allergic to seafood! I'm dying! Ah. You're not allergic to fish gene. You're allergic to a specific protein that is produced in the fish. Fish have thousands of genes, and this is not the one anyone is allergic to. Swallowing up their way, constricting. This is the end. Plus, proteins produced by these genes are thoroughly tested on hundreds of human samples with a variety of allergy to make sure they're not allergenic. You're fine, so stop messing around. I feel much better now. Beyond that, we use these techniques to genetically tweak our produce in a number of ways. Everything from staying riper longer to being more resistant to bruising. Sounds great. So that's basically what GMOs are. Genetically modified organisms. What? GMOs? You tricked me! Alright, alright. Cool it. 
Nobody says GMOs are perfect, but not for the reasons you hear about online. Just like the overuse of antibiotics, weeds can also develop resistances with the overuse of pesticides, creating super weeds. But see, we can manage those downsides through regulation. There's plenty of benefits to GMOs too. We can make our food more nutritious, last longer, and feed more people. In the mid-20th century, a scientist named Norman Borlaug invented a genetically modified wheat which has been credited with saving over a billion people worldwide from starvation. The point is, we owe it to ourselves as a society to take an honest look at what benefits scientific advancements can bring to the human race. Hmm? Who are you talking to? Hmm. Also, can I get another growing tomato? This is the realm of pure science. None of the food is real. Oh, that explains why I'm still hungry. You probably should. Still delicious!